Good morning, and welcome back to Botany. We are going to talk about roots today. Roots are a good example of a foundation. Strong roots that hold something solidly in place so that the plant can grow. It's also a metaphor. When people decide they're going to stay somewhere for a while, they say they're going to take up root. They're going to, uh, you know, um, basically stay in that place, kind of like a plant does. And in our very mobile society, then um, that can be really nice to stay somewhere for a while. Uh, for a plant, it knows it's going to stay somewhere for a while, probably its whole life uh, for most plants. And so what does a root do? Um, well, a root is a collector of water and nutrients and things for the rest of the plant. Um, unless the plant is just the root. But for most plants, um, it's going to use these roots as feelers, almost as like um, fingers or feet that are digging down. If you've ever dug your feet into the sand on the beach, that's what this plant is doing with these roots. It's uh, getting more stability. It's going to be harder to knock over. It's going to support the structure. But the other thing is the sun, the first thing it does when it hits the earth is it um, provides light and heat, which is not great for water because light and heat is going to make that water evaporate. So there's going to be no water uh, or little water at the top of the, uh, at the very top crust uh, of that earth. So where you first see the sun hitting the earth, there's probably not going to be that much water. So what do the roots do? Well, they go underground and they stay underground. And you're going to have a number of different types of roots. You're going to have like a deep tap root that searches down for water. Uh, you know, and you're going to have all these other um, roots. And as roots grow, uh, most plants want to send out a number of roots at the shallow layer so that when it rains, it'll be those roots will be the first to collect water for the plant. But then they'll also send roots out at sort of like a medium length uh, below those shallow roots that are just right below the surface of the earth. And also send out some deep roots. Um, yeah, and sometimes even like a nice long tap root that will just search and search and search for, for water. Um, now, in some places, they have the opposite effect. Um, the root is trying to keep the plant in place because there's too much water. So um, like in Florida, where there's a lot of um, erosion and they're losing a lot of the land, they actually have these mangroves, which are federally protected land. You're not allowed to touch mangroves or pull them up or chop them down or anything like that. And what these mangroves do is they actually grow right out of the water. So these plants do need to have a foundation in the earth but their roots are more for stability and support and to be able to grow in marshy, swampy land, uh, even in uh, high salinity, the high salty waters in the ocean, these mangroves can grow and then keep the land in place because the roots are actually holding the land in place, which for anyone who has ever run up and down hills on hikes or something and had an adult scold them and say, hey, you're gonna, you're gonna create erosion. Well, you know, it, it could be true. Um, you may actually, if you kill the plant or destroy the root system, you could be really hurting the, um, the ability for that land to stay intact because roots help hold the earth in place. That's something that roots do, which is a really nice benefit for the, for the earth as well. Otherwise, when it rains a whole lot, if there are no roots there to hold that soil in place or suck up that water, um, number one, if the water doesn't get sucked up, sucked up, there's going to be more water coming down, um, coming down and creating floods. And then also, if it's not holding that earth in place physically, it could just wash away that topsoil, wash away that nice soil that plants can grow in right down the hill uh, or out to the sea or wherever it's going to wash it down into a valley. And you're really going to lose a lot um, from erosion. Um, so roots take up many different forms um, between plants and trees. Some have very thin roots and they get blown over easily. Uh, as we were looking at um, 
you know, algae. It has really thin roots because it's more like just like one big leaf with a very poor root structure system. It's kind of in that sandy soil underwater, which is very hard to grow in anyway. And in a strong storm with a lot of waves and turbulence and um, a lot of suction and pulling power, those algae are going to get ripped right up and washed ashore. This is why we see a lot of algae washed ashore. Well, for some plants, that's actually a strategy. They want to get ripped up, so they have short roots on purpose. Um, some things, like trees, develop really thick roots, and some trees develop even thicker roots than others. So when you're planning a little garden or planting some trees, it's good to know what type of tree you're planting um, and where you plant it. Um, because as I said uh, earlier, you know, um, humans often have a foundation. They'll build some concrete to have this like really hard stone and then they'll build up a house on top of that. Or we'll have this concrete road that's like nice and flat and good for cars to drive on. Uh, or even a concrete sidewalk that's kind of nice and flat. You could ride a bike on it. You could walk on it. You could roller skate. But if you plant a tree right in the middle of where this concrete is, in other words, next to your house or um, next to a sidewalk or, uh, or the road, well, the roots are going to dig down. And depending on how much water these plants are getting, if they're getting nice water, well, then the, the roots will stay pretty shallow. They'll stay up. If it's not getting enough water, the roots are going to start searching out. They're going to really branch hard sideways. They're going to branch down. They're going to go all around looking for, for water. That's, that's the job of the root. And so what you see is these roots can be incredibly strong. In some areas, if you've ever been to some uh, big cities or even where, where we live, uh, there's been a lot more um, intelligent planning as far as trees. But before they really knew about this, sometimes uh, I noticed this a lot in big cities in the, in the Midwest and like the uh, East Coast. Um, you know, they started planting these trees that are going to last a few hundred years. Uh, and they're there and they're kind of like staples and they're part of the city. But the roots are coming up and just destroying the street, tearing them up. These really thick, strong uh, tree roots ripping up concrete. And that's, that's something that they can do. They do it slowly over time. Um, but yeah, for the most part, they, um, uh, they, don't, they don't move that quick. Roots are pretty solid and thick, and they're going to stay in place. For anybody who's had to try to remove a tree... Um, you can cut a tree down and then sometimes people just leave the stump because the roots are such a mess and so hard to get out. Um, it, they just want to leave it there and not even deal with it because, um, there's just, the, the roots are so thick. They can destroy anything else that's underground too. If you have, um, power lines buried underground or especially pipes, sewage lines, stuff that you really don't want destroyed, um, Roots will usually grow around it. They have this unique and amazing ability to just, when they hit something hard, they'll grow right around it. So if they go down and hit rock, they'll just veer to the side and then continue to grow sideways or keep creeping down and just try try again until they hit something hard. Now, if there's not if there's still not enough water, they're just going to bust right through that hard thing. So they might even go through your steel pipes that takes water into your house or unfortunately, sewage out of your house. You really don't want that situation occurring. Uh, your toilet water that's being flushed to get busted up by roots. But that happens. So, um, what roots do, what their main job is, is to suck that water up and um, collect it for the plant so that it can both feed itself because you want to have nice healthy roots and then also transport that water up to the plant. Now that's part of the vascular system and we are going to get into that more next week when we talk about stems. Um, but what the root does, what its main job is, is to uh, make sure that the plant is able to acquire water but also able to acquire nutrients. There are certain um, nitrogens underground that the plant really needs for growth. Um, so the plant is going to um, suck up some of that. And one of the ways that plants do that is on the roots. It'll have these really fine, tiny micro roots. Uh, and those are called root hairs. Um, so, you know, you might have this main part of the plant that has this sort of a deep roots. 
and the roots can branch. And, uh, you know, when you have these, you can have larger roots and then branching smaller roots coming out of those roots. Um, and then you also have these, uh, these root hairs, these tiny little things, you know, and what they're, what they're doing is they're absorbing these little, they're just looking all over the soil for whatever's there. And plants uh, eat up things that people don't eat up. Plants particularly like, uh, you know, these nitrogen-rich sort of compost. Um, if anybody has ever been around when gardeners spray this stuff that plants love to eat, it smells a lot like poop. Sometimes because it is poop. A lot of farmers make something called compost tea, which is they take rabbit poop uh, or sometimes chicken poop, and then they mix it with water and then they spray that around the roots of their plants. And again, this is a pretty uh, good example of why it's a good idea to wash your food before you eat it, because you don't know when the last time somebody sprayed an actual poop mix with water onto the plant that you want to eat. But uh, as far as this going towards the roots, this is going to be, for most plants, really healthy and beneficial. Plants eat uh, their discarded waste, uh, and other animals discarded waste, um, which is amazing. It's actually part of a much larger process. This little microbiome living under the plant, uh, we'll get into that on Friday, where you have plants living in harmony with animals and uh, fungi and insects and bacteria and all kinds of stuff that we might consider gross, but it's actually really good for the plant and you need plants to survive as a human you absolutely need um, energy and you get your energy by eating things and uh, to eat things you need things to grow so you need these plants to grow so there's really no need to be grossed out by the things that plants eat that's just what they're into that's their preference and that's really good for their growth um and we as people uh, like different things. And there are foods that are better for our growth and worse for our growth. We absolutely will get into those things, but not for today. That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me for Roots. Bye-bye.